We have a non-Muslim. Okay, go ahead, sister. Assalamu alaikum. I'd like to ask if you could shed some light on a verse in the Bible. It's the Old Testament, Solomon chapter 5, verse 16. It's the Hebrew text. Hiko mamitikim wikulo Muhammadim zidude wazara'i baine Jerusalem. I know that in English, Muhammadim has been translated to altogether, altogether lovely. lovely. What I'd like to ask is why do Christians not know that Muhammad has been spoken about in the Bible? Well, the sisters asked the question. She's given the Hebrew of the verse of the Bible from Song of Solomon, chapter number 5, verse number 16, which says, Hikkum Amitakim, Vikulli Muhammadim, Zaidudi Zairai Baina Jerusalem. Which means, sister only translated one word, it means he's most sweet, he's altogether lovely, he's my beloved, he's my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. This is the complete translation of the Hebrew verse she quoted. And when it says Hikkumamitakim Vikulli Muhammadim, Muhammadim in the Semitic languages, when you give respect, you add him to it. Like Allah is for God, Elohim is respect for God. So same thing to the name Muhammad, they add him and it means it says Muhammadim. So if you read the original text, the name of Muhammad, peace be upon him, is even mentioned in the Bible. Sister is asking, then why don't the Christians believe in Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? Sister, you should ask this question to the Christians. I ask this question to hundreds of Christians. Alhamdulillah, some of them accepted Islam. Most of them did not. So I agree with you that the name of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is mentioned in the scriptures of most of the major world religions including Bible. And as I mentioned earlier, that not only is he mentioned by name, he's even prophesied in various different parts of the Bible. He's prophesied in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 18. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 19. In the book of Isaiah, chapter number 29, verse number 12. In Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16. He's also prophesied in the New Testament. In the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse number 16. Gospel of John, chapter number 15, verse 26. Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse number 7. Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14. In several places, sister. So that's what I asked to the Christians. If it's clearly mentioned about the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, then why don't they believe in him? Those Christians who really study and analyze and do research, Alhamdulillah, they accept Islam. The others who do not want to accept the truth and say, oh, I have been a Christian for 40 years. Now you want me to change my religion? So they are afraid. Many a time the ego comes in between. Many a time the society comes in between. Many a time what will my friends tell me? What would my customers tell me? So these things prevent them from accepting the beauty of Islam. What they fail to realize they wouldn't mind offending their creator just to please their family and their friends. Pleasing our creator is more important than pleasing your family and friends. So those who realize the importance of creator, importance of almighty God, Alhamdulillah, they accept Islam. Sister, I would like to ask you that are you a Christian or are you a Muslim? I've been studying Islam for about six months. Mashallah. So do you believe now that there is one God? I do. Do you believe Jesus is God? Peace be upon him? No, I don't. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the messenger of God? Yes. Mashallah. So if you believe there is one God, you believe Prophet Muhammad, messenger of God, then according to me, you are six months of research. Yes. <laughs> Your six months of research have brought you to the truth, sister. Pardon, I didn't hear you. <laughs> Those are tears of joy. 
yeah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> when a person realizes the truth, that's what even Quran says that when people hear the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the moment the believer, tears roll from the eyes. So these are tears of happiness and joy that we have found the truth. As Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said in the Gospel of John, seek ye the truth and the truth shall free you. So I believe the truth has freed you today, sister. Your six months of research has brought you to the truth. Sister, would you like to accept Islam? <laughs> sister, would you like to accept Islam? Yes. Is anyone forcing you? Absolutely not. You're doing a lot of your own free will? Yes. Inshallah, say it in Arabic and you can repeat it. Okay. <laughs> Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa rasuluhu. Wa rasuluhu. I bear witness. I bear witness that there is no God. That there is no God. But Allah. But Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness that that Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. That is the messenger. And servant of Allah. And the servant of Allah. Servant, servant of Allah. MashaAllah, sister, you're a Muslim. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that as He has guided you, may Allah make you a source to guide the other non Muslims towards Islam. And I pray to Allah to grant you the best in this world and the Akhirah and to grant you Jannah paradise, inshallah. Uh, good evening again. Uh, I'm a very strict follower of Brahmanism, but. Uh, I mean, I really like a lot of aspects in Islam, but is it necessary for me to convert into Islam to follow certain rules or, you know, following my own Brahmin religion and then go ahead with the certain aspects which I really like about Islam? I've seen a lot of lectures of you, sir, like uh, the similarities between Islam and Hinduism and various other lectures, but I really like your talks a lot. Sister, that's a very good question. She said that she's a uh, strict follower of Brahmanism, but she likes many aspects of Islam. She's asking that can she follow these aspects of Islam and yet follow Brahmanism. She has seen many of my talks and she appreciates my talks. Sister, first let me tell you that Islam or becoming a Muslim is not a label. Islam by definition means peace acquired by submitting a will to Almighty God. So any human being who submits his or her will to Almighty God, he or she is called as a Muslim. Just <laughs> by label Muhammad, Zakir, Abdullah, Sultan, Shakir, that doesn't mean you become a Muslim. Or Fatima, Aisha, that doesn't make you a Muslim. Muslim means a person who submits a will to Almighty God. So first okay. you have to find out what is the commandment of Almighty God. The sister said that she's a strict follower of Brahmanism and she likes many aspects of Islam and she has seen many of my tapes, my lectures, including similar to Islam and Hinduism. If you have seen these sister, then my answer would be easier. It will be easier for you to understand. If you have seen my cassette similarities between Islam and Hinduism, the talk which I gave, I think in the first peace conference in Chennai, similarities between Islam and Hinduism. Sister, if we analyze, even if we read the Hindu scriptures, Hindu scriptures too say that you have to submit your will to Almighty God. But as I told you by the passage of time, all the previous scriptures, they have not been maintained in the pure form. There have been interpolations, there have been fabrications, there have been corruption. Most of the scholars of all these religions, whether it be Hinduism, whether it be Christianity, whether it be Judaism, they agree that the scripture has not been maintained in the pure form. And if you have heard my tapes, I told you initially, Mahabharat was a story told by the grandfather of Arjun. It contained 8,000 shlokas. Then 
you know, it kept on going down the ages, it became 24,000 shlokas. Now there are more than 100,000 verses, 100,000 shlokas. Who says this? The scholars of Mahabharat. So by the passage of time, there has been interpolation, there has been corruption, but all these scriptures, in spite of being changed, yet they do contain the remnants of the word of Almighty God. And the basic of all the religion, if you have heard my talks, is that Almighty God is one. He has got no idols. He has got no photograph. And all the religions preach that Almighty God is one. And if you have heard my talk, I've said in many places, Chandogya Upanishad, chapter number six, section number two, verse number one, Ikkam Vividityam, God is only one without a second. And in Sveta Sveta Upanishad, chapter number four, verse number 19, and Yajurved, chapter number 32, verse number 3, it says, Natasya Pratima Asti. Of that God, there is no Pratima. There is no image. Pratima means image, photograph, painting, picture, sculpture, statue, idol. Of that God, there is no Pratima. There is no photograph. There is no painting. There is no picture. There is no sculpture. There is no statue. There is no idol. So all the scriptures stress on the oneness of Almighty God. And the Brahma Sutra of Hinduism is Ekkam Brahm Dyote Naste Nena Naste Kinchan Bhagawan Eki Hai Dusra Nahi Hai Nahi Hai Nahi Hai Zara Bhi Nahi Hai There's only one God Not a second one Not at all, not at all, not in the least bit Now coming to your major question That Can you be a strict Brahmin And yet follow teachings of Islam Sister By being a normal Brahmin And trying to become a Muslim is difficult but if you are a strict Brahman, strictly following the Vedas, then you have no option but to submit your will to God. If you are average Brahman who may be following something and not following the other thing, etc., then it's difficult for you to submit your will to God. But if you are a strict Brahman, strictly following the Vedas, you have to follow what I mentioned earlier, the three verses I quoted, that you have to believe in one God. You have to do no idol worship. You have to believe that God is one. He has no image. He has got no photograph. He has got no statue. And if you read your scriptures, your scriptures mention about the coming of the last and final messenger prophet, Muhammad, peace be upon him. And if you have seen my talk on similarity between Islam and Hinduism, and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi the Hindu scriptures, I have mentioned in detail that prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is mentioned in your scripture. So if you are a strict Brahmin, you have no option but to believe there's one God, he has got no images, he has got no idols, and you also have to believe that Almighty God's last messenger, final avatar, Kalki avatar is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But when your scriptures say you have to follow the Kalki avatar and follow the last and final messenger, so when you read the teachings of this messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, you will find that it is matching with many things what is mentioned in your scriptures. But at the same time, it may contradict with many things mentioned in your scriptures. Now what we consider the Quran is the last and final revelation of Almighty God which was revealed to the last and final messenger Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. This Quran is the Furqan. It is the criteria to judge right from wrong. So whatever matches with the Quran, if it's mentioned in the Bible or in the Veda or in the Mahabharat or in the Ramayana, you can be sure it is according to the will and the commandment of Almighty God. If it contradicts, then you have to agree this is against the wish and the commandment of Almighty God. So if you are a truly strict Brahmin, following Brahminism, you have to believe in one God, you have to go against idol worship. And if you heard my talk on similarity in Islam and Hinduism, if you follow at least those things which are mentioned in my talk, leave aside the other things, at least those things. And stop everything else yet i feel that inshallah inshallah it will be sufficient to transform you to jannah inshallah so if you have heard my talk on similarity with islam and hinduism talking about oneness of almighty god talking about prophet muhammad peace be upon him how salah should be offered by prostrating should not have alcohol should not have pork which is mentioned in your scripture as well as the quran it's mentioned about modesty in your Vedas, that the lady should be covered. It's mentioned in the Quran. So all these things what are mentioned in my lecture. There are many other things, but even if you follow these things strictly, sister, then inshallah, inshallah, it will be sufficient for you
to at least pass this test in this examination. If you want, you can follow many more things, but at least these things, the major thing which I mentioned, but whatever contradicts in your scripture, you should not follow because your scholars say it has changed by the passage of time. You have to realize that these things are interpolations, are concoctions, are fabrications. So what is matching if you follow sister, inshallah, inshallah, you can be a very good practicing Brahman, following what is mentioned in your scripture, which is matching with the Furqan, the Quran, and inshallah can be a practicing Muslim also. So I hope inshallah that Almighty Allah gives you hidayah, sister. Sister, do you agree with whatever I mentioned in my lecture on similarities between Islam and Hinduism, sister? Yes, sir. Very well. Sister, do you agree with what I mentioned in my talk? Yes, sir. Do you agree to follow those things? Yes, yes, I do. So if you agree to follow those things which I have mentioned, so practically you have submitted your will to God. You know, in Arabic we may say Muslim, in English we may say a person who submitted will to God. So if you agree with what I mentioned in the scripture that there's no God but one God alone should be worshipped, idol worship is wrong. If you agree the last and final messenger, the Kalkiya Utaris Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and agree with his teaching, then according to me, if I have to say in Arabic, I will say you're following the religion of Islam, and I say that you're a Muslim. So sister, do you agree with that? Yes, sir, I do. <laughs> so do you want to... Do you want to proclaim in public that, you know, in the Arabic way, that you are a Muslim? Sister, would you like to proclaim in the Arabic fashion? You know, since you say you agree that there's one God, and you agree that Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger, so would you like to proclaim that you are a Muslim? I mean, uh, I wouldn't say I'm a Muslim, but uh, yeah, I do <laughs> accept whatever you say. So if you agree that there is one God, and yeah. he doesn't have any idols or image, and he alone deserves worship. And if you agree that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the messenger of God, these two are sufficient to let you enter the fold of Islam. You know, pass. Other thing, practicing will come later on. So if you agree there's one God who has got no image, and you disagree with idol worship, and you agree Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger, then you can enter this college, inshallah, this institute, or the way of life is the right word, and then Inshallah, the practice keeps on improving. So would you like to enter this way of life, sister? Uh, God willing. Yes, that Inshallah. <laughs> Mashallah. <laughs> so sister, again I'd like to ask you officially, that do you agree there's one God, sister? Yes, I do. Do you agree that no one else deserves to be worshipped but that Almighty God? Okay. Do you agree that idol worship is wrong? Um, not fully, but yeah, partly. No. <laughs> See, either fully or partly, you can't say that, you know, I want to eat the cake and have the cake. Either idol worship is right or it is wrong, means you can pray to God, but you don't have to go through an idol, you don't have to worship an idol. Do you believe that God has got no image? Yeah. Yes, you believe that. That's it. So you believe God has got no statue? Yeah. Good. Do you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger? Uh, I've not answered, gone till that extent, but uh, the rest of the things which you said, I would accept with that, but I really don't know about the latest thing No, do you believe that he's the messenger of Almighty God? Yes, I do. You believe he's the messenger of Almighty God? Yeah. Fine, everything practices being a perfect Muslim, no one is perfect. We strive. <laughs> so, sister, if I say in Arabic, would you like to say the Shahada? Would you like to say the Shahada, that is the proclamation in Arabic? The same thing what I mentioned, that there's no God but Allah, and Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. Would you like to say in Arabic? Yes, sir, sure. Okay, fine. So I'll just say in Arabic and repeat it, and again I'll give you the translation. Okay. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa rasuluhu. Wa rasuluhu. I bear witness. I bear witness. I bear witness. That. That. There is no God. There is no God. But Allah. But Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That Prophet Muhammad. That Prophet Muhammad. Is. Is. The messenger. The messenger. And servant of Allah. And messenger and servant of Allah. Mashallah, sister. Thank you. Now you're a Muslim. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide you. <laughs> and I request that inshallah all the brothers and sisters that whenever a person accepts Islam, you can support her in terms of knowledge, in terms of social things. Sister, I request you that 
please inshallah read the quran with translation even if it's earlier and implement on the guidelines and inshallah you'll be a good practicing human being who's submitting will to almighty god and do pray for others sisters